Welcome to Dr. Jeffrey Wells' Looking Good and Feeling Great podcast, live from Las Vegas, with his co-host, Daryl Craig Harris. And we're back at it again. Who'd have thunk it? Beautiful Las Vegas. It's fabulous. So, uh, so yeah, we're, uh, we're in this funny time period of the weather because it's it, f- it flips on and off like a switch so one day it's 40 degrees one day it's 80 degrees uh and then windy and then, i was and just then gonna say that kind of <laughs> nice for about two weeks and then it gets hot um so and again apologies to my east coast friends that are just still sh- shoveling snow so yeah. <laughs> although it's sewing in the mountains here today so that's why it I, was, I was told it is beautiful so when you look up yeah. and there's snow on the mountains uh nevada meaning uh, snow capped for for those of you in nevada trivia at home yeah. so how have you been doing you're always it's busy. So yeah, no, life is good. Yeah, we tried not busy for a, a couple of months, and that was not good at all. Probably uh, a couple of years. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, the, you know, the not be no, but we didn't do anything for two uh, two months, and mm-hmm. it became in the office. We had the show. It became someday. Mm-hmm. And what do you mean? He says, well, someday we'll clean out the the closet, and someday we'll rearrange the files, and someday right. I'm like, well, it's someday's someday. here. That's right. Guess what? Welcome Whether you to, like it or not, it's here. To someday, and so of course we, yeah, we did all of that kind of the maintenance mm. stuff, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, but yeah, no, things are things are good now, um, not better, and I think that things are feeling better and I, I feel that in the office, and there's I think a less anxiety, and I think mm. that Las Vegas is coming back. Uh, to doing what it's best, which is uh, really being the hospitality center of the world. Um, the pools, believe it or not, uh, it's March and the pools are open uh, here, except today because they're high winds. All right. Um, but uh, we take care of a lot of the the cast, uh, the gals, uh, and some of the guys that uh, work uh, at the uh, pool, and, and they're they're very excited uh, about pools. Yeah, I think it seems like we're going to actually have a regular our regular normal summer. I mean, r- r- under under the circumstances, that's right. pretty exciting. Yes. Yeah, right? So hopefully, if the numbers stay down, et cetera, et cetera, um, I, I hope. Uh, I hope that's uh, we get to the new normal uh, sooner than later. So. Yes, don't we all? <laughs> so today we're going to talk about um, Botox and as a preventative, which is interesting because we've talked about that before. Um, personally about like the hyperhidrosis which sure. is the sweating and the arms and all sorts of things let's let's talk about that sure so botox botox is a terrific uh drug uh it's a drug and by botox we uh, will also talk about a uh, dysport and zeaman and all that and and really it's like um a coke and pepsi and royal crown okay. uh, and i said that the other day and some i guess i'm dating myself by saying i mean rc well, yeah, royal crown. <laughs> could be fanta could be you know whatever you're not uh, that old yeah so um but having said that is uh, they all do the same thing they're all all good. There's a little bit of uh, um, the differences between the two, and you have to be cognizant of that when you put it in. Okay, fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but by and large, it is a medicine that you put into the muscle. The muscle stops moving uh, so much, and, and it mellows a line out on top of it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it was originally brought uh, forward with um, strabismus, which is this uh, muscle spasm. Uh, and then they noticed after treating this, like, hey, the guy's got less crow's feet. Uh, and so that kind of came from there. So it's actually been on the market for decades and decades uh, and then approved really for cosmetic use uh, about two decades ago. Uh, and uh, it also is used therapeutically for migraines, et cetera. Now, the neurology guys and gals, they put it in different areas, uh, more posterior on the scalp, et cetera, uh, than uh, we do cosmetically. But even with the cosmetic patients, we've had about two dozen patients over the years that say, hey, I don't get headaches anymore. They're not as bad. And uh, you can get it's a headache for 20 different reasons, right? right. Um, it can be vasoocclusive. It can be a bunch of them. But basically, if you're one of those folks that are always staring at the screen or staring at your kids or whatever it might be and, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and constantly using those muscles, sometimes if that's the cause of that, um, mm-hmm. we have a few people that uh, are better headache-wise. But basically, in our hands, we use it for the cosmetic purposes. And to your point is it used to be for you know the 40 and 50-year-olds and now the some drift into the 30-year-olds, et cetera. Right. And we even get some 20-year-olds coming in looking for that. And then those folks really start to have a conversation of, of, wait a minute, do you really, really need this? Do you really want to start this this early? And many of them say, well, I understand, but I'm in the modeling field or et cetera, et cetera, and I right. want to prevent them before we start. So we have a discussion about that. And depending on that particular individual circumstance, then we may proceed or, or not or whatever. But we, we've turned a few people down actually uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, she didn't have a wrinkle 
um, uh, in her family. I mean, I told her, look, you're bad for business. I said, there's nothing, I don't have anything for you here. Uh, <laughs> right. but you know, but send your mom, uh, and grandma, <laughs> but, um, um, but yeah, so, so yeah. That, that we do that too, is we, we say no. And, mm-hmm. uh, uh, now to your point about Botox for hyperhidrosis, um, which is excessive sweating and especially in the axilla and the armpits, uh, it can really make a big difference. It's really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, we have lots of family and friends that have uh, done this. Um, we've had, and here it's hot here in Las Vegas in right. the summer, in summer months. Oh, yes. And so these salesmen, <laughs> these poor salesmen are running around 120 degrees and you, you can't get the car cold enough, uh, fast enough. Right. Right. Yeah. So basically, so these poor guys. It always looks tough when you walk in. You oh, you sweat sweating sweat. all over the place. Right. So yeah. So, so I've had a couple guys, uh, tell me, Hey, you know, doc, is, I, I haven't worn a powdered shirt in years and years and years, <laughs> powder blue shirt in years and years yeah. and years. Uh, and, um, we do their thing and, uh, and they're able to do that. Now, if you play basketball or whatever, you're still going to sweat, but it's kind of yeah. that nervous sort of, and yeah, some people have a, have an issue with, but just normally sure. have an issue with that. Sure. So yeah, both, uh, uh men and women, uh, mm-hmm. we, we have treated and treated successfully with that. And that usually in our hands, it, it, Botox in the face tends to last about, uh, four months, takes about four days to start about two weeks. You kind of know what you have. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, at uh, four months, it kind of fades away. Now my hyper, Metabolic folks, my folks that are in the gym all the time, they tend to go through it a little bit faster. Uh, those also those folks that are actresses, hi, welcome aboard. Uh, they tend to go through a little faster yeah. as well. The uh, folks for the hyperhidrosis, the sweating of the uh, armpits, typically about a year. We can typically oh, okay. get them out a year. Uh, again, it just kind of depends on the, the the individual. So people that have not had Botox, and I mean, I, I know people. We've all heard, obviously, that the term or Botox, the name, but um, what's the safety on Botox? So free people just have no idea. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. See, it's very, very safe. I mean, mi- I mean, tens of millions of uh, patients have had this uh, over the year. It's, it continues to be the number one, I think, most popular, uh, quote unquote, um, aesthetic procedure, uh, mm-hmm. if you will. And um, uh, and it has such a good therapeutic index that people think that everything's a piece of cake. Uh, again, you have to go to somebody who's well trained and experienced, in my opinion, because the classic um, thing is, is somebody has heavy eyelids. Uh, they're using their frontalis muscle, their muscle in their forehead to keep their eyebrow up and keep their eyelid out of the way. And if you're a little heavy handed and you don't recognize that and you wipe out the entire frontalis, the eyebrow will drop. And that's where people say, oh, I had it and it dropped and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you had too much. And that's opinion. no fun. <laughs> Bo- no, fun. No, it's no bueno. Right. Uh, Botox in that area and it dropped everything down. So the, the key there to try to recognize that, again, recognize things before they're a problem uh, and then modify it. Sometimes I say, look, I'm not doing Botox in your uh, in your forehead uh, because you know you're not going to like it. It's going to you know, it's really going to drop you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so so that happens too. Or we modify it and have people come back in a couple of weeks and, and and tweak it to work it a little bit more as yeah. well. So um, so so those are all things that we do. The other thing with Botox, which is interesting, is people say, well, hey, can you go ahead and lift my eyebrow? And you cannot really lift the center of the eyebrow because in the mid pupillary line where your pupil is and go up, right? So a centimeter above and a centimeter to both sides of that, that's a no fly zone. And what I mean by that is you don't want Botox in the area because there's this little muscle called the levator palpebrae, right? So if you get Botox, which is like a hook that's on the lid of your eyelid, right? So if you get Botox in that levator palpebrae, the eyelid will drop. Right, and you're going to get the lazy. No bueno. Yeah, yeah, people don't like that at all. Now, you can get a little bit of the very tail of the eyebrow to come up a bit uh, with a couple of drops of uh, Botox, uh, but that you can kind of just get a millimeter or two uh, on the very, very lateral edge. But sometimes that's all people you know need, mm-hmm. and, and people like that. We, we have a real uh, spectacular name for that in the office. We call it the little lifty thing. <laughs> I have to come up that's with a, a very technical I have term. to come up with a better name for that. The, I have to schmaltz that up somehow. With the it sounds like something that maybe lift. your brother Jack has something to do or with. Something like that. So, <laughs> yeah, no, he would, he, he's more creative. He would come up with like some great name for it. I, I haven't. I haven't done that yet, so we got to figure that out. <laughs> so it's sort of in the same family, and I mean, we've talked about fillers and Juvederm, but that, that, that often that's used together with Botox. Yeah, so again, which we get on me actually. <laughs> so again, it depends on the 
Uh, it depends on the patient. Usually Botox we like for between the eyes, the forehead, the crow's feet. Sure. Sometimes you lo- you, we use it in a muscle called the depressor angular oris or the DAO, which is on the corner of your mouth and then downward uh, towards your jawline. If sometimes you put a couple drops in there, the corner of the mouth may come up just a little bit. So those folks would have a little bit of a downturn uh, in the ends of the mouth and they're like, oh gosh, it looks like I'm grumpy, you know, grumpy all the time. <laughs> um, you know, our be, uh, Some people are. R- that's R- that's well, that's true too. Different topic, anyway. Yes, uh, you know, uh, R B F to the max uh, there, and so sometimes we can get that to come up. Also. Sometimes in the neck, if people are starting to get some banding, banding in the neck is basically when you kind of fire the muscles in your neck and you get these bands. Those are thickening of the platysma muscle. Well, sometimes we can put a little bit of Botox there and get those to relax and make those look nice mm-hmm. too. Um, so in my hands, Botox works like 98% of the time between the eyes and about 60, 70% uh, in the neck. And mm-hmm. the thing is with the neck, you have to go to somebody who knows what they're doing, knows the anatomy, right. et cetera, because there's lots of Be very name, careful. named yeah. structures in the neck that you don't want it to, to get into or get Botox into. So so again, like anything else, be careful and go to a well-trained, experienced injector. Right. Because there's a lot of people, I mean, and we've talked about that before too, but um, there's a lot of people doing Botox that maybe aren't necessarily exactly trained True. to and, do that. And right. just here, and, and and thankfully to the law enforcement here in uh, Las Vegas, they just cracked down on a couple of folks that were running a med spa uh, and not doctors, not healthcare people, not anything. And they were putting bad things in the people. So, mm-hmm. um, so thankfully, uh, yeah, but thanks hats off to the law enforcement community to keep us safe, uh, from, from these folks and, and not using sterile technique. I can go on and on and on. So, but it's, right. it's all, all sorts of no bueno. Let's talk a little, I mean, since we're there, let's talk a little bit about that because I know the med spa thing has become very popular and people see that as maybe a less less expensive way perhaps to get those things done, but it's also can be very dangerous. right? Yeah. So, and again, there's plenty for everybody. So uh, as far as there's plenty of people that want the services, et cetera, et cetera. So this is not a competition thing at all. You know, somebody you can take all my Botox tomorrow. I'll be okay. So mm-hmm. uh, as far as that goes, I enjoy doing it. I like it and the patients like it too, uh, but I get to go to surgery also. So I, I have somewhere right. else to, but to you have the background, patients. the anatomy background, yeah. the training. So, so yeah. Right. So basically, and again, there's some really good, uh, injectors uh, everywhere. The main thing is safety. Uh, are they are they following safety protocols, et cetera, et cetera? What ha- what what's going to happen if something bad happens? Rarely, but it happens. Uh, who's the medical director? You know, who is the doctor that's in charge of uh, of all this? And kind of what their what their plan is. Also, like anything else, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I look, I go to the uh, or used to go to the gym uh, pre pandemic and, and such, but you grab the you know little magazine on the way out, and they have ads for four dollars right, uh, a, a right. unit Botox, and I, I can't buy it for that. So if like if I can't buy it for that, yeah, you got a question. There's no way that it's the real deal. And so where are these people getting from it? And that's that's suspect. So mm, yeah. yeah. So if it's a too good of a deal, it probably is. And to that effect, Nevada actually um, has laws against that. You can only do. Um, Botox or fillers in either a hospital or a medical doctor's office. So somebody that's certified, Not, to, right? So, right. so, that, so, I mean, a doctor's case. So, because they were having parties by the pool at the Hard Rock, et cetera, et cetera, right. and it was no, it was not good. Uh, the only exception is if there is a medical, a bona fide medical conference in town, you can inject on the strip. If it is a medical conference, they went ahead and did that proviso. Interesting, uh, because there's lots and lots of medical conferences here, and so they wanted that one carve out of the law. But other than that, yeah, no. If somebody says, hey, you know, at your neighborhood. Um, uh, haircut place. Hey, we got some Botox in the back room. <laughs> That's probably not where you want Which to be. Which sounds funny, but that does happen all the, all the time. time. Yeah. It happens all the time. Yeah. And we hear, I mean, definitely in Las Vegas too, because we do have a, a large population of people that are in the public, octo waitresses, performers. Yeah. Um, everybody's always looking for a deal, but sometimes it's not a deal. <laughs> no. So yeah, we, we say this all the time that cheap gets, cheap gets expensive fast. Right. Uh, because if there's an issue, then it's always going to be more uh, to go ahead and try to get you back to square one. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, I may have a skewed view of things because, you know, we see, we fix it. 
you know, mm-hmm. so people come in at us and like, uh, my one eyebrow is high, one eyebrow is, oh, yeah, okay, come in. Yeah, so, and it's funny because I, I uh, people may not know, but I handle your social media and I, I see a lot of those questions like, hey, I just, we actually just saw some of that last week and you feel bad for the people because they spent their money, they had sure. a good intention. Oh, 100%. And, and, but they just don't know what they're walking into. Yeah, so yeah, so ask questions. Uh, don't be afraid to ask what you're never, ever going to offend me or a guy like me uh, with mm-hmm. questions. So it, yeah. it's okay to, oh, 100% okay to ask. It's your face, it's your health. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's important to cover that. Um, we were talking about, well, you were talking about your story about uh, diagnosing on the street, which is kind oh, of a funny well, story. Um, yeah. So no, we, we, you know. Which leads me into something else, but go ahead and tell yeah, the story. Yeah. So, so the, the, the story I told in the operating room the other day and the, the topic was, is so what was trading in Philadelphia like, Doc? Uh, and especially in the 90s, et cetera, it, it, it was interesting. Well, you were in the emergency room, right? Well, yeah, I was, it was, yeah. I was all over the place. So Crazy. yeah, for the in trauma and emergency. So I was down, um, over at St. Agnes Hospital in Philadelphia, which is on Broad and Pass Young, for those of you guys who know Philly. And uh, the burn unit uh, was there. And then uh, my buddy, Bill Hughes, actually runs the burn unit now, and he's moved it over to Jefferson. So mm-hmm. um, in any case, so you get to a point, and we were doing, a, I guess it was a power weekend, which means basically you came in Friday morning and you left Monday night, right? So you're there. And so you can only eat enough hospital food. And so basically, so I went across the street, kitty court across the street to McDonald's. I'm like, okay. So I go ahead and I, and again, I've been wearing the same stuff for 30 years now. So I'm in a pair of scrubs, white coat, right? The usual and a stethoscope in my pocket. And I walk across the streets to McDonald's, right? And I go to McDonald's, blah, blah, blah. I have my little paper sack, uh, uh, whatever. So for my fillet of fish and I'm, I'm walking out and, um, and so I look over across the street and I spot this guy and you just know he's a little off, right? I mean, not hostile, not threatening, not. And he's, oh, he's the just, streets of Philly, that's very surprising. He's just, he's a little <laughs> off and you're like, okay, this will, this is probably going to be interesting here. Right. And next uh, across the street on one side of broad street is St. Agnes. And the other side of the street is Methodist hospital. Why they put him across the street somewhere. I don't know. But anyway, so this cat comes walking, I'm waiting on the street corner. This cat comes walking across the street and sure enough, walks right up to me and says, Hey, you a doctor? And I'm like, well, yeah. So How'd you we, figure that yeah, one we out, gave right? that away. So the white coat and the scrubs and this. Hey, I'm like, yeah, like, yeah. And uh, he says, oh, he says, hmm, you know, I just went to my cardiologist over here at Methodist, and, and he says I have a murmur. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. And he says, yeah. What do you think? <laughs> And I'm like, all right, hold this. And so I hand him my sack lunch. Like, I t- am I being I take, punked or I what? Take, right. I'm, yeah. <laughs> What's going all right. on? He's a hundred percent. I'm looking. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and I take my stethoscope out of my pocket. I put it in my ears. And so I'm listening to this guy on the street corner in Philly. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, mm-hmm, yeah. So I take it out of my ears and I'm like, he's right. Do what he tells you. And give me a lunch back. <laughs> oh, hey. And he, so he says, he says, I'm really thankful. Again, you know, nice, but you know, a little off. And he says, hey, thanks, doc. I really appreciate the second opinion. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, I don't need a McDonald's. That's I'm right. not, and I'm like, I yes, love McDonald's. Yes. So yeah, and then, and then like turn green, and I went that way, and you went funny. that way, and that's it. But that's that's your typical Philly. That's funny, you know, yeah, kind of stuff. Which kind of leads into like, you know, I know this happens to you all the time. I know I've actually done this to you, so I apologize. But um, when friends, family, pe- people that you don't even know meet you and they know you're a doctor, sure. they start saying, "Hey, I've got this pain. I've got this blah 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 blah." Oh, yeah. How do you how do you deal with that? <laughs> so it, it happens all the time. It it depends on uh it. it kind of depends on the, the circumstance. And as we were talking earlier, it's funny because you, you, you know, you, you work your tail off in high school and you get to college, right? And you get to college and you really work your tail off. Oh God, I'm at school. Okay. Right. So you get to medical school and, um, the, the, you know, first couple of days, you know, they're teaching you, you know, the, the branches of the aorta, they're teaching you, you know, anatomy uh, uh, 101, you know, right? they're, they're doing biochemistry. Where does the C go on the OH and all that kind of stuff. Right. So you're learning all this stuff. And then, then people, you know, Aunt Gertrude calls you up about their bursitis mm-hmm. or, you know, should I be on an ACE inhibitor versus a beta blocker? And you, yeah, absolutely no idea. Right. <laughs> so, you know, you, DKS don't know. Yeah. yeah. So, and you're like, ah, huh? and so about clinical medicine, right? So, so yeah. And, and you just have to say, look, I, I, I really don't know. And, and it's, and I learned in medicine, guess what? It's okay to say, I don't know. And right. then you it's important to learn that. Find that a guy that knows, or yeah. you can go to library and cause somebody probably wrote it down someplace. Mm-hmm. So, so, um, so yeah, so the first year of medical school, they teach you how everything goes right in the body, how it's supposed to work. 
And the second year, they teach you how it all goes wrong uh, in the body. That's pathology and all that kind of stuff and pharmacology. Uh, and then the next the year, three and four, is actually seeing patients and putting it all together, et cetera, mm-hmm. et cetera. But as a second year student, um, you, you you think you have everything because everything starts off with like well, tired and dizzy or weak and tired, right? And you're yeah. a medical student. You're, you're studying your you know tail off. You're like, I've got this. And you're weak and dizzy. <laughs> so, so, so this buddy, buddy of mine comes up to me second year. Med school. And uh, it says, uh, hey, JJ, he says, uh, says, I think I have Kuru. I'm like, there is no possible way that you have Kuru. <laughs> what is Kuru? I right, so ask. <laughs> Kuru. So he says, yeah, but I'm really kind of tired. And I went, I'm like, well, yeah, we're medical. Yeah, we're tired. Yeah, you're it's supposed to be tired. tired. <laughs> right, you're supposed to be tired. If you're doing it right, you're supposed to be tired. Yeah. And so, so, so Kuru is this infectious disease that you get. For, uh, and it's and I think it's New Guinea. I mean, it's we're going back for thirty five years. Now. So in I think it's New Guinea that cannibals get from eating human brains. Okay. <laughs> now, and by the way, that's the level of which minutia, is possible. You could possibly get that level of, of, minu- of, of, of minutia <laughs> that you get in medical school, right? So, <laughs> so I'm like, all right. So, so, so when's the time? That's... When's the last time you were in Papua New Guinea? Yeah, not often. And when's probably. the last time you ate a human <laughs> brain? Okay. So you're, you're probably haven't done tired. that in years, right? right so, yeah. so you probably don't have. That. I'd widen my differential <laughs> diagnosis if I were yeah. you. And yeah, get some, get some water and have like a decent man, get some sleep. Yeah, right. So, sleep. Yeah. yeah. So that'd be, that would be the, the thing. So yeah. So that happens like, How funny. often. So, but to answer your question is, 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 yeah. I mean, anybody who knows me knows a few funny things is typically is on uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. I go to the operating room. Uh, and so Mondays and Thursdays, don't ask me to go out because because uh, right. I'm in bed by nine. Oh, yeah. You have a yeah. big busy schedule. Yeah. Um, it's it's a joke. It's I know it's a school night, you know, and, and that's <laughs> that uh, that's me. So uh, but basically also people know that I'm the wrong guy to ask as far as especially for schedule two narcotics. Yeah. Wrong. Uh, right. Yeah. For, uh, but even antibiotics or anything else, because I think it's it it, it, it depends on the circumstance or if they're a long if their family member who was actually also a patient, and yes, we, I've talked to their family physician, et cetera, you know, et cetera, history, whatever. It's, right. it's a whole different thing. But it's actually poor medicine. Uh, and as much as you really should, you know, listen to, to, to somebody's chest or maybe have to do the x-ray, but I'm not set up for that. Uh, so by and large, yeah, folks that know me know that that request is kind of going to go nowhere um, as far as as far as that kind of goes. Right. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, but that's 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 a big hurdle that, I think all of because you go to parties and yeah. Oh, also. this is Doctor oh, Doctor yeah. Roth. Well, that's well for me. That's the fun part because anyway, I love talking about obviously on behalf of the show, right? right and I right. talk about plastic surgery, but you'll appreciate this story. So, um, so we go to one of these charity things. So a couple of things happen to charity things. Is one is they figure out that I'm a plastic surgeon. They go, oh, exactly, I got a exactly, question. Exactly. Well, actually, it's not even I got it. Uh, my friend has a question. I have like, a well, scar. Well, tell your friend, you know, come by now. Right. So at that point, my wife says, all right, I'll see you in 20 minutes, right? She goes away. She, 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 she knows, the, she knows how like, that goes. She probably could tell the answer at this point. We've run around. Yeah, she's yeah. like, oh, what you need is. I'm like, oh, great. So. Uh, so, but if two of them come at the same time, right? So if there's this Mrs. Smith and Mrs. Jones, they both come up to me at the same time at a charity thing and they go, hi, Dr. Roth. And then they look at each other and I'm like, oh no, right? <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> so the lie that I provide, cause I do that too, uh-huh. is, is I say, oh, I must've seen you at the Alzheimer's thing. And I must've seen you at the cancer thing. And everybody goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they all walk <laughs> away. So not, you know, have any conflict or anything. But anyway, so we're at the um, there is a hospital system, the St. Rose Hospital System. They used to have galas. We used to have galas before the pandemic. And so it's a room full of doctors and, and healthcare people mm-hmm. and everything else. They're raising money. Okay, fine. So we go to this thing. And so she says, my wife says to uh, my beautiful blushing bride says to me, says, you know, my feet hurt. Could you not talk to everybody on the way out? Because <laughs> I will. I'll talk to the guy. Well, you like, yeah, you like, to, talk to, you like to talk. I'll talk, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to everybody. Right. The guy screwing the light bulb, whatever. I'll, I'll talk yeah. to everybody. So and and. So, okay. So I go ahead and I talk to maybe a couple of people and I catch up with her in the portico share where the, where the parking is, right? And she says, okay, well, uh, which one of your degenerate uh, friends did you talk to? I'm like, well, first of all, it's a room full of doctors. It's okay? very nice. We're all in suits. <laughs> well, there's a couple of notable exceptions, right, but they're yeah, fine. Well, That's okay. Go. It's Vegas. <laughs> exactly. So I got a guy. So... Um, it's usually my dad's friends. That's a whole nother story for another day. But anyways, um, so, uh, so, you know, a bunch of doctors and, and stuff like that, all in suits, you know, I mean, it's, you know, it's a big night. And I'm like, so I turned to her, I'm like, well, first of all, they're not just degenerates, most of them anyways. And I said, you know, you want to know who I was talking to? She's like, yeah, I want to know who you don't like. I'm like, Bishop Pepe. I was talking to the bishop. And she's like, 
Oh, he can. You can talk to him. So yes, <laughs> yeah, 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 he, yeah, he but, passes. The so so and and to bring it all home funny. is is uh, what was I talking to the bishop about? Right. Not theology. He's a he grew up in Philly. He's a Philly guy. Ah, so we were yeah. talking about cheesesteaks, and we were talking about the Eagles, and we were talking about Just all, guy know, stuff. all that. All yeah. the guys to St. Agnes, so guy, you know, boy, boy stuff. And she looked at me. She's like, "You're talking to the bishop about cheesesteaks." And I'm like, "Well, yeah. He's got enough of theology, religion, and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah, you talk to you know talk about cheesesteaks once in a while. So that's funny. Broad Street." Yeah. That whole thing. So the Mummers Parade. Yeah, hey, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Hey, if you got you got to love Philly. There's everything is there. <laughs> yes, yes. So and and it's and it's, uh, it's since I was there, it's really it come a long way and uh, and has a bit of its own renaissance, etc. And actually, an amazing amazing medical facilities. Oh, it's tremendous. I mean, you have five medical schools uh, there, mm-hmm. and uh, it just it, we used to have conferences that all of us would from different medical schools would present. And it was just the, the amount of uh, research and such that was going on there. It's just, mm-hmm. uh, was very, very cool. Tell people how they can uh, find you online. Sure. So we're all over. Uh, the cornerstone is the website, which is uh, www. JJROTHMD.com, JJRothMD.com. And uh, social media, we're all over there uh, as well. And we're working hard to be even more over there uh, in as much as we have uh, Facebook, we have uh, Instagram, we have Twitter, we have LinkedIn, we have TikTok, we have MySpace, I think we have Friendster. I'm not really so, sure. So, so much. I it's, know. it's preposterous. So, but having said that, yeah, and, and we check it. And so if you have questions and, and, and please call us at the office, we actually answer the phone with a human being. And so we're happy to do that. Uh, you can call us, you can email us, you can set up a smoke signal or whatever you like. And um, if there's a topic involved, we usually will go ahead and uh, cover that yeah and you've actually started a, a little video clip series we get questions we get questions yeah so uh and that's uh, it's on uh our various platforms including youtube uh, as well and uh, we're trying to highlight some of the questions that uh, we get asked often uh and uh not only about plastic surgery but also about growing up in vegas etc cetera, yeah. et cetera. so it's that's been kind of fun uh, as well yeah we're having fun with that thank you so much everybody for joining us and uh please check us out on all podcast outlets and uh, there's a whole long long, long list which includes spotify iheart radio apple podcasts um google podcasts amazon music it's a very long list <laughs> but um thank you so much and have a great day and thank you thank Dr. you Ralph. very much always always a good time yeah absolutely Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. For further information, please visit the podcast website link for Dr. Jeffrey Roth. See you next time.